my name is Shane Christensen. I am a sculptor in Australia. I live on the eastern side of Australia in a subtropical region and uh, I carve a lot of eucalyptus species. Um, that's because they're, they're quite locally abundant and um, it's very local, it's very durable stuff but it's also really hard so I need some really sharp tools to um, carve into that stuff. Uh, it's a little bit slower than um, some of the other timbers that people usually carve because it's so hard and a bit splintery but um, geez, it, uh, it'll outlast me and it'll continue telling the story as long after I'm gone. So today I'll be carving a barramundi and um, I'll be using the turbo plane which is probably my favourite tool that Arbitex made. And then more recently I've been playing around with the, um, the shiny new one that they gave me. Um, and lately I've been experimenting with the sawdust. That's all the wood chips. It's taken a long time for the tree to grow. So um, to honor that tree, I try to use everything I can. Oh, wow, look at that. This one here goes on to the power carving unit there. Slots into there. And you bolt it up. And then you've got a depth gauge here, so you can set this up as a nice plane. So let's go and give this little bad boy a go. Uh, the reason why I chose to carve a fish is because that was the first thing that I learned how to carve. Um, most likely because it's, um, it's something you can progress from a more of a two-dimensional relief carving and slowly shape into a, a three-dimensional sculpture. So there's a lot of good reasons why a fish is a great thing to start with. So my favourite tool from Arbitec is the turbo plane. This has got little um, tungsten blades on there which just chip up and carve the hardwoods that I work on. Absolutely love it. Had them for years. Tried them on some really dirty timber. Don't tell the guys down at Arbitec about that. Uh, you can sharpen these, he's got little tungsten teeth in there. Absolutely freaking awesome. There's no blade on the edge so they don't kick around like some of those dangerous ones out there.
<coughs> so here's our chips from today from the turbo plant this is um, a eucalyptus species I've never actually tried this one so a bit, a bit excited to try this particular species it smells pretty subtle so I think it's gonna go pretty well with fish but let's do a little test this one's called yellow stringy bark and here's a little fish here she's gonna fit in just fine Got a few lemon myrtle leaves stuffed into the belly there. I've salted the outside and I've put some native pepper on there too. It's a pepper. <clears throat> Let's check that out. Let's have a look here. Oh! Gee, that smells amazing. Let's have a look here. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, if only you could smell that. Oh, oh, bought up a teat. Mmm. Mmm. <clears throat> look at that there. You can smell the, um, the smoke flavour through it. I've got a little bit of um, wood chip straight off the turbo plane there as a, gar as a garnish. I mean, who wouldn't? The woodcarvers know what I'm talking about there. And let's just have a look at this flesh here. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have a little taste of that. Mmm. Little shout out for um, Samantha Martin, Bush Tucker Woman. She wrote this book about bush tucker and inspired some of the flavours here, like the lemon myrtle stuff in the fish. Thank you very much, Sammy. So this is Shane from Down Under signing off. Um, thanks for uh, watching all the way to the end. Uh, <clears throat> so I hopefully you have a bit of fun and uh, scored a few tips out of that. And if there's anything that I can't emphasise enough, it's make sure you're making chips, not dust. A chips is a sign of a, um, a sharp blade and a, a quality tool so um that's that's pretty important in this game <clears throat> all right have fun enjoy and be safe cheers Bye.